Well, hi everyone. Thanks for showing up for this Delta Math walkthrough. So let's take a look at how we uh, solve these problem types. Here I notice that, uh, well, it's a compounded monthly problem. We have a hunter who's investing $580 in an account paying 4.6% interest compounded monthly. So no deposits or withdrawals are made. How much money to the nearest dollar would be in the account after 19 years? A couple ways we can answer this type of question. One is uh, going to seem like cheating to you, but I'm going to suggest that uh, it's actually just more efficient. I'll show you the longhand version first. Copy out your, uh, your variables. So I'm just going to make this smaller so I know that um, our principal here is the initial amount invested, $580. Our rate of interest is equal to, what was it, 4.6%. And our compounding period, well, we're monthly, so C is 12. Interest is applied 12 times. And what's time? 19 years. So let's go ahead and find that. T, 19. Okay. Now, we're going to use this formula. Future value is going to be equal to the principal multiplied by 1 plus R divided by C raised to the power CT. Okay. And substitute and solve carefully with Bedmus. So we're going to have future value is equal to 580 bucks multiplied by how much it grows. One plus R as a decimal. Well, let's write that as a decimal. 0 0.046. 0 0.046 divided by 12. Okay. And then CT. Well, C is 12. So it's 12 times... 19 years. Basically, that's the answer to the question, how many times was interest applied? 12 times per year for 19 years. So that would be 120 plus uh, 240. It's uh, 228. 228 up there. Okay. And then 0 0.046 divided by 12. Uh, too bad, so sad. That does not divide evenly. So we're going to get a janky decimal. So here's how I would manage this. Do it in bed misorder. I'm going to start by evaluating inside the bracket. So I'm going to do 1 plus uh, 0.046 divided by 12 equals. And what this number represents, 1.0038, it means 0.38% interest is applied every month. So that's our interest rate per compounding period. And then we're going to raise that to the 12 times 19. So I'm going to raise this to the this number here, 12 times 19. So 12 times 19 equals this number here. So his number has his money has almost increased by a factor of 20. Very cool. That's nice to see your money grow by a big factor. And then we're going to multiply that by 580. That's our last step. He will have $11,537.74. Feels like I made a mistake. But let's see if Desmos uh, Delta Math likes it. Actually, I, at this point, I could check against uh, the Desmos method. I'll show you the Desmos method. Now, here's the Delta Math method that you might say, is this even fair? And I would say yes, because anyone that's working in this industry is going to use all the tools that they can. They're going to be interacting with a client and talking to them about different investment strategies or borrowing strategies, and they want to be able to serve that person numbers quickly. This allows you to answer many different questions quickly, so it's useful as a tool. All I've done is I copied out my formula here. Future value equals the principal multiplied by 1 plus R over C to the CT. And then I can just input the value of these variables. $580 was invested. The rate was 0.046. The uh, C was uh, 12, it was compounded 12 times, and time was 19 years. Let's go up and see. So then it just outputs what uh, the uh, that value is. So if you're going to use this method, just put in F as F, not as FV. And I'm getting a very different answer than I got on the calculator. I knew that value was way too high. So um, it's important to just also start with a guess with these types of questions. Here we were growing by a little bit shy of 5% and we had 
about 19 years to do it, I would expect that we're going to increase our money by you know, a factor of, well, uh, 5 divided by 72, we're using row 72. That's going to take about that much time to, a little bit better than double is what I would guess. And yeah, it looks like we've a little bit better than doubled. So there you go. 1387.64, but we need it to the nearest dollar, so 13.88, sorry, $1,388. To the nearest dollar, $1,388. Submit the answer. Yes. And it likes it. Hooray. And then we could go back and hunt for my mistake in here. I suspect that this was my mistake. I used 46% interest instead of 4.6% 4, 4 interest. I'm pretty sure that's where my mistake was when I was punching on the calculator. And you could check back in the video and see where my mistake was. This is uh, correct, what I've written down here, and it should be equal to the value we found in in uh, Delta and Desmos. Now let's do a new one. This one is a continuous compounding problem, so let's do one that's uh, compounded daily. Okay. So if Carson is investing eight hundred and fifty dollars in an account paying five point seven percent interest, compounded daily, how much money would he have after six years? So you can go into Desmos. My future value is still still this formula here. But my principal is different, so I get the different number, 850 instead of 580. The rate of interest was different. It was 5.7, so that's 0 0.057. And C was now compounded daily, 365. And time, well, it was only six years. Start with a guess. About 6% interest for six years. Uh, well, I think we're going to be like growing by about a third, no, a little more than a half, a little bit, a little bit less than a half, I think. So let's see. Yeah, it's telling us uh, a little bit less than a half. Oh, look at that. My guess is pretty good. So $1,196.56. And how would I do that if I was working longhand, like on a test or something? Well, I would do the same thing I did here, copy down my values, substitute them carefully, evaluate the bracket first, raise the bracket to an exponent, and then multiply the result by the principal. And then you will get the same answer. Let's see if Delta Math uh, likes this answer. The nice thing about Desmos is I can just copy it. Oh, copy, put it in Delta Math, paste, and round to the nearest dollar. So it's 1197, because 56 makes it go up that junk out. Hooray. Okay. Now let's take a look at a continuous compounding question. For continuous compounding, we need to use a different formula. So let's go ahead and set that formula up. Uh, you would use a fresh Desmos window for this. And you would say the future value is equal to the present value. You can remember PERT, P times E raised to the RT. Okay. Notice that it did not suggest that I create a slider for E because it knows E is the special exponent number. Desmos already knows that number. So let's put in P equals, and uh, P equals in this case $8,500. And then we're going to also put in R. R is 3.4%. R equals 0 0.034. Someone who loves Fibonacci numbers is making these problems. 34 is a Fibonacci number. 8 and 5 are both Fibonacci numbers. I noticed uh, 580 or 850. Some Fibonacci lover is making these problems. There's a Fibonacci number that made a lot of Delta Math problems. And then how much money to the nearest $10 would be in the account after 18 years? So T equals 18. Okay. And... At 3% interest or a little better, we're going 18 years. I'm expecting to about double, and that looks like pretty close to doubling, but not quite. So there we go. Okay, uh, so let's see, uh, 15, six, to the nearest, uh, let's grab that number, copy, and then put it in here, paste, and round it down to the nearest $10. Submit the answer. Voila. Any questions, hit me up by email or uh, come see me.